In this video, we are going to review basic exponent laws that you have seen. So the first exponent law I want to look at here is multiplying powers. The most important part about these exponent laws is that we have to be working with the same base. So if you don't have the same base, these exponent laws do not apply. The first one involves multiplying two powers with the same base. So you can see I've got the same base here and here. The rule says that I just add my exponents. So taking a peek at this example here, I've got 2 to the power of 2 times 2 to the power of 6. Now we know that we can write 2 to the power of 2 as 2 times 2, and we know that we can write 2 to the power of 6 as 6 twos being multiplied, like this. Now if we count the number of twos here, we've got 8 twos, which coincidentally is the same as 6 plus 2. Okay, so we can simplify and write this thing as a single power as 2 to the power of 8. We could just do this by adding 2 and 6. Okay, that's the exponent law here. Now, same situation for in, in part B here. A squared and B do not have the same base, but I can multiply in pairs. A squared and A cubed have the same base, so do B and B to the power of 4. So that's what I'm going to do here. Just applying this exponent law, I'm going to add my two exponents. So I can add 2 and 3, and I can add 1 and 4. Remember, there's a 1 exponent here that we don't write, just for simplicity's sake. When we simplify, we end up with A to the power of 5 times B to the power of 5. The second exponent law I want to look at, same situation, we have to be working with the same base. If you don't have the same base, you cannot apply this exponent law. Okay, so this one says if we are dividing powers, we take the exponents and subtract. Okay, so the first example I want to look at, we've got 2 to the power of 5 over 2 to the power of 3. You know that we can write this as 5 twos being multiplied over 3 twos being multiplied, or like this. Okay, and from previous math studies, you might be familiar with the operation that allows us to cancel terms. If, if I've got one term divided by another term, remember that's just one. We don't like to write one in math. So when we can cancel out a series of twos until we have no twos remaining on the bottom. And what we're left with is only two twos. Well, two times two we know is four, but we also know that we can write that as two to the power of two, which coincidentally maybe not, is the same as 5 minus 3. All right, so there's your, your second exponent law. Take your exponents and subtract, and you end up with your simplified power. So same thing in this example, but remember we don't have the same base on top or the bottom, but we do have a pair of same bases. So we've got a to the power of 3 over a to the power of 2. I've also got a second set of bases that are the same. I've got b squared over b. Okay, so what I can do is I can subtract my exponents um, I'm just going to do this the same way that I did part A, right? I'm going to cancel my terms. I've got an A on top, A on, top, on the bottom, same thing. I've got one B on top that I can cancel with a B on the bottom. And what I'm left with is A times B, okay? So think about our exponent law. We can subtract our exponents. 3 minus 2 is B to the power of 1, and 2 minus 1 would just be B to the power of 1. All right, the third exponent law, when you've got a power of a power, so if you've got x to the power of a in brackets, and we're raising that whole thing to the power of b, what we do is we multiply our, our two exponents. This first one, I've got negative 2 to the power of 2, and I'm raising that whole thing to the power of 3. That's what these brackets signify here. Remember that the rule just says take those two exponents and multiply them together. So I'm taking 2 and I'm multiplying by 3 to give me an exponent of 6. Same thing in part b here, but remember with fractions, an exponent on the outside applies to both the top and the bottom. All right, so what I'm going to do is multiply 5 times 2 and 3 times 2 to give me a to the power of 10 or b to the power of 6. All right, zero exponents. These things are kind of strange. In general, any base to the power of 0 is equal to 1. I just want to look at, for, for example, a to the power of 3 over a to the power of 3. You'll recall from our, our division power rule that I can subtract my exponents because I've got the same base. So I end up with a to the power of 3 minus 3, which is a to the power of 0. Okay, and you're thinking, well, how's that relevant? I'm just going to tuck that away for a minute. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to look at this expression, but I'm going to write it a little differently. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do the canceling method that we looked at, our second exponent law. Remember, I can cancel a terms in pairs, and every time I cancel an a term or a pair of a terms, remember, I'm left with a 1. Right, so I've got a 1 here, times 1, uh, times 1. 1 times 1 times 1 is just 1. Okay, so well, that's kind of strange. The same expression can be written two ways. Right, I can write this as a to the power of 0, or I can write it as 1. Well, from this, we can kind of make a leap in logic and assume that a to the power of 0 is, in fact, 1. Okay, and that's, that's sort of your mini proof for this, this power rule. So any base in general to the power of 0 is equal to 1.
All right, so taking a peek at this first example, y to the power of zero is gonna be one. Okay, nothing too crazy there. This guy, however, things can get a little difficult. And really, as long as you remember bed mass, you should be okay. So remember bed mass tells you to do your exponents before your multiplication. What we have here is negative three to the power of zero. Our base is actually three. That zero does not apply to that negative. So this exponent is attached to the three and afterwards we're multiplying by negative one. So in this case, we actually end up with one times negative one, also known as negative one. So in this case, I've now got brackets around my base. I've got a negative one to the power of zero. So this zero applies to both my one and the negative in front. Okay, so this whole base to the power of zero, any base to the power of zero is one. So we know this whole thing is gonna be one. But again, we're multiplying by this negative in front. Okay, so in this case, we've got a one. And we're multiplying by negative one. So of course we end up with a negative one as well. Again, these things can be a little strange. Just remember bed mass. Don't forget about your brackets uh, and do always do your exponents first and just multiply by whatever's in front. Okay, the last exponent law I wanna look at quickly. This one involves negative exponents. Typically uh, in math, we like to write things with positive exponents. Uh, so this one just allows us to do that. What it says is take your base and write it as a reciprocal, so flip it. Uh, so in this case, we've got x over one. We're gonna flip this thing, we're gonna make it one over x, and we're gonna make that exponent positive. If you have another variable, for instance, x over y, same thing, just flip your fraction, make, write it as a reciprocal, and make that exponent positive. Okay, so taking a look at this one, the first example here, this says simplify by writing as a power with a positive exponent. Right now we've got a negative exponent, so that tells us to go to this law, flip your fraction, which we can write as two over one, we make that exponent positive. We could simplify this as just saying two to the power of two. In this case, we're gonna look at this general example up here. We're gonna take our fraction and we're gonna flip it and we're gonna make that exponent positive. All right, so last thing I wanna look at here, this is an example that involves combining all the exponent laws we've looked at in this video. Okay, so you can see this first one here. What we're trying to do is use our knowledge of exponent laws to simplify this thing. So this one, there's a lot of stuff going on. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna I'm gonna think about my power of a power rule. And I, I know that this thing applies to everything inside the brackets. So I'm gonna multiply all of my exponents by three. And that includes the exponent on this three. Remember the, there is a, a one exponent hidden here. So this is three to the power of one, right? So one times three is three. Three to the power of three is 27. So I'm just gonna write that as 27. And you can see I've, mu I've multiplied two times three, three times three, one times three, two times three to end up with this expression here. So now we've got a situation where I've, I've got pairs of, of like bases that I can, I can divide and, and recall that you'll subtract your exponents. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do here. I've got six and three, so I can subtract those exponents to get three. I can subtract these exponents to get three. That 27 is just gonna come along for the ride and we end up with 27 x cubed times y cubed. Okay, next example, same thing. I've got a couple exponent laws involved here. Uh, on top, I'm multiplying powers of the same base. I'm also dividing by power with the same base. So what I'll do is I'll look at the top first and say, well, look at this. I've got a multiplication of powers that tells me to add my exponents. I'm gonna keep the bottom the same. Now I've got a, a division of powers, which tells me I can subtract my exponents. So if I take negative nine, subtract negative eight, I end up with negative one as my exponent. And lo and behold, we have a negative exponent. We might as well write that as a positive power. It doesn't explicitly tell us to do that in the example, but it's good practice. So remember, we can flip A, write it as a reciprocal, and make that, that exponent positive. That'll just give us 1 over A.